Hello, my name is Christopher Caliendo and welcome to Tutti Talent. Today we are featuring the conductor Dr. John Devlin, a native of Bronxville, New York City. And currently Dr. Devlin is the conductor of the Gourmet Symphony. This is a very unique symphony concept that combines food and drink uh, with performance programs in very unique ways. He's also the conductor of the McLean Youth Symphony Orchestra, a top-level youth orchestra in Northern Virginia. Now, John, to my great joy, is my nephew. And prior to his graduation, I composed a large-scale orchestral work which he premiered called the Capriccio Americano. The basic musical canvas of the Capriccio Americano manages to try to capture the elusive identity of American music through patriotic anthem, uh, cultural influences, and pervaded motifs transitioning through a variety of variations and moods. Let's listen to an interview with Dr. John Devlin regarding his approach to conducting this large orchestral work. Well, Capriccio Americano comes in at just about under uh, a little under 20 minutes in duration. And the way that I think about this piece is actually operatic. It's a series of small vignettes that change character, that change tempo, that change orchestration completely. And what I would first like to do is just give you a small example of what I mean. So the beginning is an introductory section that has big full orchestration and it's in an andante maestoso tempo. Then as you move on, that could be considered the first number of maybe a Mozart opera. Then we enter a completely different world, bar 49, the Adagio non tanto. This is a kind of haunting bassoon solo with very, very light accompaniment underneath. Then the character changes to a series of fast sections. At bar 160, we have a, a tempestuous allegro. And then at 200, we have a presto with, uh, with fireworks all over the orchestra, including a backbeat of maraca. Then at 301, the texture breaks down completely and we're left with a string fugato. Um, and then the, the, these fast sections come to an abrupt end. And at bar 390, we have an adagio section once again that is reminiscent of Ravel or Debussy with impressionistic gestures in the woodwinds. Then we have one more return to the andante tempo that opened the piece at 373 before we have what I consider the climactic section at bar 417 where we have this piumoso in a romantic style. And then we have a return at bar 441 to the presto uh, music that we had back at bar 200 that drives the piece to a very wild finale. John also talks about technical aspects of the piece and provides instruction and insight for other conductors who wish to perform it. Say uh, the biggest technical challenge would be, just like in opera, the ability to very quickly and accurately get into new tempos throughout all of these uh, varied sections. One of the challenges I faced was really tempo memorization, so that each time music came back, how did the adagio um, tempo markings, how did the andante tempo markings, how did the two presto tempo markings relate to each other and making sure I hit them right on the money each time so the piece's structure was obvious to the listener by those tempo markings even if the material was slightly changed. Congratulations to Dr. John Devlin for being our featured 2T talent, for acquiring his doctorate at the University of Maryland, for his entrepreneurship in the classical arts with the Gourmet Symphony. For those of you who would like to find out more about John, please visit his profile page as a registered member at ChristopherCanliendo.com by clicking here.